Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Ruckus webinar. In a moment, you'll be hearing from Asif Wimsat. He's our Director of Alliance Business Development at Ruckus Wireless. Also, uh, Bharat Jayakumar, who's the Product Manager at Ruckus. And as a special guest, we have uh, Danny Ben Simon, He's the Product Solutions and Marketing Manager at Siklu Communications. And they'll be uh, briefing us on his uh, ready, uh, Ruckus Ready partner at Siklu and their uh, um, high-capacity backhaul solutions. Uh, before we get started, I, I just want to let everyone know that uh, a couple of things here. Um, all lines are, are on mute, so if you have any questions, please type them in to the uh, Q&A feature on your WebEx interface. We'll try and answer the questions throughout the webinar and also at the end during the Q&A session. I also want to let everyone know that uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available to all attendees. Uh, now to get started, here's Steve. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, today is going to be a, a very interesting webinar. Uh, two topics, really. I'm going to provide a quick introduction to our Smart City solution, and then Barat and Danny are going to introduce millimeter wave wireless, how that works, um, as well as the specific Siklu uh, solution. Uh, the agenda, um, you can see that. Now, the Ruckus Ready Ecosystem Program, um, most of you should be aware of this, but I want to do a quick pitch for it. This is our longstanding uh, ecosystem program where we work with third-party solution providers um, where, where necessary, we test them with Ruckus, we develop solutions, we provide some marketing collateral. And this is a, a program that's meant to give our channel partners and our salespeople uh, more complete solutions, which can either expand opportunities, create new opportunities, or provide you with the necessary uh, capabilities to fully respond to RFP requirements. Um, these are all meet in the channel relationships. Um, so it's, it's, it's uh, something where, where the our, our VAR channel will assemble the solution using Ruckus and these ecosystem partners, uh, but it's an extensive program. Um, I encourage you to go to ruckuswireless.com slash ruckusready. There's nearly 50 different ecosystem partners there in a range of application areas and vertical markets. Uh, the program's getting big, but there's capability there now, which is new you can sort on a vertical market and see all the relevant solutions for K-12 or smart city or retail. You can also search on an application type like access management or voice over wireless LAN. So it's, a, it's a, a, an important program. We're investing a lot in it. Um, a quick note, you know, obviously we've been acquired by Brocade. This program is going to continue. They have a very similar parallel program. Uh, one way or another, we're likely to merge them. But uh, all the partners from the Ruckus side will continue. It'll be, you know, continue to be easy to use. Again, it's out there as a resource uh, for all of you. So, I'm um, very excited to uh, talk briefly about smart cities as a, as a warm-up for the, the sick loop presentation. This is a market that's really starting to take off. This is happening on a global basis. I'm sure you're, you've all heard about it. The idea is that um, more and more of the population is moving to cities uh, to be energy efficient and uh, environmentally sound. Cities are trying to implement new solutions um, that, that leverage technology, leverage communication, and, and these solutions cross all sorts of areas, you know, energy conservation, environmental, uh, enhancing transportation, both from an efficiency as well as a, a customer amenity perspective. You can offer advanced healthcare capabilities. Um, you can see this. You can you can see all, all, all the, the the various solutions. Um, this is this is top of mind for mayors everywhere. Uh, they're really looking uh, to do this, and and really people are looking for very very significant results. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, from a ruckus brocade perspective, we really like this because even though this is a new market, people are still working out exactly what applications are going to work and are going to be real. Um, the one universal understanding is it all requires a great, uh, a great uh, connectivity networking solution. 
and, and Ruckus in particular has been very successful in this. It all starts with a connected city. So here's a slide showing um, some of our success in this space. This is not at all you know, um, uh, complete, but it's, it's representative. Uh, we think we're, we're likely the leader in smart city deployments. There's not a, an authoritative third-party source, but we are number one in outdoor Wi-Fi. We're number one in service provider Wi-Fi. Both of those are, you know, heavily overlapped with the space of the smart city. Um, the roughest, our outdoor Wi-Fi portfolio is, is an ideal fit for large-scale urban deployments. Obviously, the smart zone controller, uh, whether it's in a public cloud, private cloud, um, you know, whatever format you want to take it in, it, it is, is uh, well suited for a large-scale deployment. Um, our outdoor um, access points are, are, you know, best of class. In particular, the T300 turns out because it is the smallest outdoor access point amongst, uh, uh, you know, enterprise class uh, Wi-Fi providers, it's very attractive because you can hang that up on a, on a street light or other street furniture and it blends into the background. It's not a big, ugly thing hanging out on a pole. Um, we have a smart cell insight. We've got Spot, which provide you know, very quick uh, additional value capabilities. And our work in Hotspot 2.0 is becoming increasingly important because you know, no sense putting out a citywide Wi-Fi network if no one's getting connected to it. So, um, Obviously, we announced our cloud-based architecture just a few weeks ago, but roughly uh, the smart zone and the VSV have been suitable for private cloud-type deployments for, for quite some time. And again, that's exactly what you would need in a large-scale city deployment, um, either working with the city or potentially working with a service provider that's ser serving multiple cities. Um, I mentioned the T300 being an ideal fit for, uh, for most cities. But there's always going to be locations in the city, be it a Times Square in New York, uh, um, you know, or, or, or a stadium or, or an airport where you need even more density. In that case, you know, we, we've got high-end outdoor APs. The point-to-point, -point, the P300, fills a gap in some cases if you need backhaul capability, but we're going to expand on that, obviously, in this presentation. Um, and again, the, 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 the ruckus controller can be up in the cloud, which is a very simple model, cities, cities like that a lot. Um, within smart cities, and the, this requires, we should do a, a whole separate presentation on this, but we do have a complete ecosystem. Um, in particular, we're working with a number of very large street light vendors. Uh, many of you may be aware that there's a major transition underway from traditional street lights to LED lights. Um, the, uh, this is a, there's a phenomenal um, savings from this. The LED lights, transition to LED lights pays for itself within three or four years. And for the next 20 years, you don't need to be replacing those, those lights every couple of years as you do today. Um, that is a, that frees up money that can be applied towards the Wi-Fi. Um, and also the street lights provide an, an ideal mounting. Uh, opportunity for, for the Wi-Fi, either in the fixture or on the pole. Uh, if you've got a, a, a crew going around the city replacing light fixtures, they can pop the Wi-Fi up there at the same time. That saves a lot of money. If you look at an economic model for, uh, for a smart city Wi-Fi deployment, that's a big deal. We also have, uh, you know, we've got kiosk partners. Most of you are aware of the, the Link New York City deployment. We have uh, additional partners as well, but this is a great way not only is this street furniture, it's a great place to mount an AP in the top of, say, that kiosk there, um, but it's a source of, of backhaul that can feed additional root nodes, um, and also a great source of revenue. And those advertising screens are, are, are very, very powerful. Um, we have in our access points today, we've got DLE capabilities. We're looking at adding additional sensor backhaul capabilities, uh, which can, can be, be very valuable to cities. Uh, we're integrating our access, access points into uh, trash bins. Um, we see there's a big belly that's a solar-powered trash bin. Uh, it actually sends messages back to the city saying when it needs to be empty. So you can save a lot on, on routes. But again, it provides power. 
Um, it can be a place to mount an access point, especially since those traffic bins go in densely uh, populated locations where there's a lot of people, ideal for Wi-Fi. And again, there's, there's smart parking, there's traffic control, there's a range of applications that you can offer um, as part of a smart city solution. As we're talking to cities, and this is a universal issue, um, the biggest challenge and really the biggest cost driver for them is backhaul. Uh, if a city happens to have pervasive fiber, uh, and especially if you're working with a street bike partner, it's very, very low cost to roll out Wi-Fi. But typically, a city's going to have fiber in some places, but they're not going to have fiber in other places. Um, some places in a city uh, they're not going to want you to tear up the street to, to trench to put in fiber. You can't, sometimes can't go in overhead either. Um, it's just a challenge, and, and it's always been a challenge, and, and I think you're all aware of it. Uh, outdoor Wi-Fi, uh, you've got to find a place to mount the access point. You've got to you know, run wires to it. Um, so, so in today's presentation, we're going to give you um, uh, an update on millimeter wave wireless and then in particular on Siklu, which we think is, is a great solution. And, and the idea is that this is another option for providing backhaul into smart cities and, and other locations. It might be a college campus, could be building the building. Um, focus here, we really where we see the, the excitement has been smart cities, but there's a lot of use cases. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Bharat Jayakumar from Ruckus Product Management. He's going to give you an introduction to millimeter wave. Thanks, Steve. Um, so, you know, Steve outlined some of the challenges that we have uh, with smart cities, especially backhaul being one of them. So today, uh, mostly these are the two options that you have uh, with backhaul. Uh, one, uh, you can go with the B300, which is a ruckus product. It's wireless, you know, easy to deploy, and you can quickly get uh, connectivity across the street or uh, something like that. The other option, is to lay down fiber. Now, we know fiber is in extremely high speeds, but it's also extremely expensive. In some cases, it's pretty hard to lay down with uh, restrictions in cities and stuff like that. So what you actually want is something that is going to behave like wireless, but give you speeds like fiber. And that's where millimeter wave backhaul comes in. Millimeter wave backhaul uh, provides wireless connectivity at almost fiber-like speeds, but without the fiber-like cost. And this is a very important tool to have in your tool chest as you're considering backhaul options for, the, for your various customers. So what is millimeter wave, right? Uh, and I know this is new to a, a lot of people. Uh, you might have heard something about millimeter wave, but you didn't really know uh, the details. So we're going to give you a very quick 101 uh, on what uh, millimeter wave is and what it can do. Uh, millimeter wave is an extremely uh, wide spectrum, high capacity uh, wireless technology. Right? There are two main bands here, the V band and the E band. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is around the 60 to 80 gigahertz uh, range is uh, frequencies in which uh, millimeter wave lies. Now, the thing to note here is that the channel widths, if you're used to uh, 2.4 and 5 gig channel widths, are extremely high. They're around 2 gigahertz wide, which is what enables uh, this technology to pump in fiber-like speeds, right? And the other thing to note uh, on the right side of your screen is the beam width. So uh, what you're seeing there is the wider cone is typically the 5 gigahertz uh, you know, the P300 kind of deployment, we have almost a 10 degree uh, cone of connectivity. Whereas with uh, the millimeter wave technology, it's an extremely narrow beam technology. It's around 0.5 to 2 degree beam width, right? So it's like a pencil thin beam being sh shot from point to point. How is this helpful? It, it, obviously, it helps reduce interference. If you have extremely thin beam, it's quite hard for anyone or anything to interfere easily. And it's really great for high densities. This also is extremely useful in spectral reuse. So uh, the point-to-point -point link that you're seeing there with the narrow beam width, in theory, you could have another link which is back-to-back -back with the previous link, and it wouldn't really interfere in the way that 5 gigahertz would, just because of the narrow beam width. 
This is, you know, it sets it up really nicely for a high density deployment like a smart city. So to kind of uh, just uh, summarize what I've been saying, right? On the left-hand side, you have the P300. It's a Wi-Fi technology, low cost, easy to deploy, and it supports, you know, really long distances in even remote environments. Um, however, the capacity for Wi-Fi is limited, and the spectrum is increasingly getting crowded. On the right-hand side, you have fiber, extremely high capacity, fantastic performance, and can do extremely long distances. But it's also very, very expensive, and it's sometimes impossible to deploy just because of the local laws and restrictions that govern uh, the different regions. And of course, it is extremely time-consuming. So where millimeter wave comes in, it's kind of a best of both worlds, kind of a Goldilocks uh, approach to, uh, to this solution, where you get the fiber-like performance, but with the Wi-Fi-based technology. So it's low cost. With Ciclu, it's easy to deploy. Uh, it gives you extremely high capacity, and that's kind of the main advantage of millimeter wave. Right? It, it's a spectrum that uh, is only recently starting to open up, so obviously it isn't very crowded. It has some challenges that you need to be aware of. It is a short range technology, relatively speaking, so 200 to 300 meters, definitely less than a kilometer, and uh, it needs a line of sight. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Danny from Ciclu, who will uh, delve a lot deeper into Ciclu and a bit into the millimeter wave aspects of the technology. Uh, Danny is uh, Ciclu's product and solutions marketing manager. Uh, he has years of strategic and in-the-trenches experience deploying and scaling new technologies for mobile and fixed operators. Uh, at Ciclu, uh, Danny is, kind of works closely with Ciclu's uh, partners and customers, and he has a deep understanding of uh, the drivers and the challenges of deploying this new wireless technology. Uh, this is for both existing markets and for upcoming applications like smart cities, uh, gigabit uh, to the home or to wherever uh, in the IoT and Internet of Things and many more technologies. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Danny. Hi, Steve Barat and Royston. Thanks for having me on the webinar. I'm excited to introduce you to millimeter wave technology and Ciclus solution. Let me share with you some more facts about millimeter wave. So what's millimeter wave technologies? As we saw before, it utilizes very high frequencies around 60, 70, and 80 gigahertz. Those frequencies are well standardized by a variety of standard bodies, which uh, divided them to uh, 57 to 66, around 60 gigahertz, which is the V-band, and 71, 76, 81, 86 in the E-band. E-band is uh, 10 gigahertz wide, and the V-band today is 9 gigahertz wide, but thanks to recent FCC regulation in the US, it's got now 14 gigahertz of continuous spectrum free to use. The use cases are mostly today for wireless backhaul in outdoors. And it's also emerging a, on 60 gigahertz portion for in-room communication, only known as, also known excuse me, as 802.11ad, for interconnecting multimedia devices. The advantage uh, are coming thanks to the very wide spectrum and very uh, generous channels. So channels can be as wide as 5 gigahertz. The throughput is around uh, 1 gigabit to, 1 gig to 5 gigabit full duplex on the uh, E-band 70, 80 gigahertz. Uh, in terms of reuse, uh, thanks to the narrow beam and the fact that it's not uh, uh, very utilized, uh, we can achieve a very high reuse. The performance are predicted, and we will later see an example from Ciclu's uh, planning tool. Distance, uh, V-band 60 gigahertz can go up to 1 kilometer, and the uh, E-band 70, 80 gigahertz can go up to 6 kilometer. It requires line of sight. Uh, weather does affect a uh, millimeter wave, but with uh, combining uh, the planning tools uh, with the location where you want to deploy, uh, you can achieve uh, SLA-based services 
as we can predict the performance throughout the year. Uh, 60 gigahertz is a mostly a license exempt around the world and 7080 gigahertz is lightly licensed. For example, in the US, it costs only $7.5 per year or $10 for 10 years, excuse me, or $75 per 10 years. And the licensing process, which is a, a lightly licensed, means that it takes between 24 to 72 hours in order to get a, an approval to deploy a 70, 80 gigahertz link in the US. In some countries, it's even for free. And now, let's hear a little bit more about Ciclu. So Ciclu leads the millimeter wave in the recent uh, five years. We shipped more radios than any other vendor in, the, in those years. And you can see here how fast the market is growing. In Q1 216, Ciclu maintained his leadership uh, position with 32% market share. Millimeter wave overall are seeing rapid adoption and the consensus is that they will be a major part in cellular 5G adoption. As we saw earlier in the introduction, millimeter wave spectrum has a, is so wide which is a more spectrum than unlicensed and microwave bind combined. Finding a free channel is no longer an issue. It also means we can easily achieve multi-gigabit throughput more than enough for anything the future will bring. Millimeter wave is also characterized by narrow beams, and like you saw in the intro, this leads to high spectral reuse. It also increases reliability because it experienced no interference at all. Ciclo uses propriety all silicon technology that has proven 90 years MTBF, and this also leads to very small radios. It's a low latency solution. You can cascade as many hops as you want. While most of the time, deviation of Wi-Fi spectrum between access and backhaul works perfectly, there are applications like smart city and crowded events where it makes sense to reserve all the Wi-Fi spectrum for access and shift uh, the backhaul to another band. So 60 gigahertz and also 7080 uh, is wide and uncongested. It's a perfect for providing high capacity backhaul with no interference. A joint 5 GHz and millimeter wave solution will optimize the use of spectrum and improve the customer experience while keeping the deployment and operation cost reasonable. Gigabit capacity means you can deploy the highest capacity Wi-Fi gear available today and easily handle your customer requirements. Ciclo radios operate over 11 and more non-overlapping full capacity channels and can be deployed quite closely together. So you can backhaul and grow as needed uh, with minimal planning and no interference at all. Sounds scalable, huh? isn't it? Uh, let's talk a little bit about our, our, our uh, products. Ciclo cover a full range of millimeter wave wireless connectivity. The Eben series are available with a complete line of antenna sizes ranging from under one foot up to two feet, depending on the link length and the required availability. The Eben radio are typically used for aggregation and long haul links. They are deployed on rooftops and building facades. Maximum range is around six kilometers. Cyclos V-band 60 GHz cover uh, the frequency up to 66 GHz. This includes the newly released FCC 64 to 71 GHz band, and we are the first on this, um, on, with this on the market, and it extends the typical uh, 60 GHz uh, range thanks to lower oxygen uh, absorption at those frequencies. Our V-band radios are designed for street-level connectivity. They have the industry's smallest footprint and can be deployed on any kind of street furniture. 
maximum range is around one kilometer. So Cyclus, all other products come with integrated gigabit uh, switch, PoE in and PoE out, and five levels of adaptive modulation to cope with the uh, uh, rain conditions. And this modulation uh, is synced with eight levels of quality of server, so you can prioritize your payload. Combining 60 gigahertz and 70, uh, 80 gigahertz links give you complete urban coverage. Your network can be cascaded, ringed or meshed, depending on the available location and required resiliency. In any given a neighborhood, you can use multiple topology. This is a very flexible deployment model. So multi-gigabit wireless links crossing the most crowded city. Is it possible? Does the millimeter wave band works with no interference? The answer is resounding yes. The combination of the 17 gigahertz wide uh, band, under one degree narrow beams and vast spectrum all contribute to very high reuse, uh, reuse factor and make Cyclo uh, and its radio an excellent choice for reliable, high capacity, dense urban connectivity. The example you see here from San Francisco and only include our 70-80 GHz E-band radios as these bands only require FCC registration and we have the data. There are more than 1,000 CCLU links running in San Francisco and there are on top of that also dozens of 60 GHz CCLU radios running in parallel. There is a common misconception in the market that millimeter wave radios are sensitive to inclement weather. But this is inaccurate. Let's go and examine, and examine an example. Planning in advance will guarantee a link operation and behavior. Millimeter wave link performance can be predicted. And when using uh, planning tools, containing detailed location-based climate condition, as well as RF specification of the hardware, uh, we can offer an online calculator which does your planning for you. All you need is to enter the location and the required link lengths. For each link length, you can uh, see the adaptive capacity and the availability as you see in the San Francisco example we have here. Cyclo RF technology, including its heatless adaptive bandwidth, coding and modulation, and advanced, and advanced uh, forward error connection methodology guarantee link endurance. Over the years, thousands of links have been deployed all over the world, including in location with extreme climate conditions. What we can see here, the five levels of adaptive modulation and uh, the link budget calculator uh, from Cyclo also calculate for you for how long throughout the years in each location around the world, each capacity will be maintained according to the statistics of friend intensity at that specific location. What we can see here is a, an example from San Francisco and such links uh, even uh, manage uh, to overcome uh, the storm that San Francisco experienced in the winter 2014, if you remember uh, Storm Magadan, while keeping a uh, high capacity connectivity even throughout the storm. Another output that the link budget calculator gives is a value called RSSI. RSSI enable to easily deploy the link and we will talk about it later. Millimeter waves, as we know, require narrow beams. In some cases, those, those narrow beams uh, can be an advantage. In this example, a line of sight can be achieved even from indoor office to go outside to another building. So millimeter wave with, with this narrow beam uh, can penetrate narrow gaps between buildings, can go through glass and plastic, such as rigid telco enclosures and other types of plastics. But on the other hand, it uh, being blocked by walls, vegetation, and metal. A 
in terms of uh, simplifying the deployment. The street level 60 gigahertz radios support dual POE out for simple deployment and can power the RACUS access point. For example, uh, the RACUS access uh, T300 and the T700 series max power consumption are 11 and 25 uh, watts respectively, while the Cyclo POE out deliver dual 26 watts. The dual POE, uh, POE out is enough to power itself, cascade a unit, a ROCUS access point, and even a camera. That's all with one PoE cable. On top of that, network engineers and operators can remotely switch on and off the PoE out feature to simplify troubleshooting procedure. Now, let's jump into some real-world example. The number of uh, year-round residents, excuse me, let's go back. The number of year-round residents in Vail is small, approximately uh, 5,000, and the town's economy relies heavily on tourism. Approximately 2 million visitors from all over the world come to the area annually to enjoy the resort. For more events in Vail, it is not uh, uncommon for uh, 20,000 or 30,000 spectators to gather in a two square mile area to access internet and cellular network. Because of the town's cellular network cannot handle such density of use, the town offload some of its cellular activity to Wi-Fi, which also uses significant amount of bandwidth and affects the overall connectivity. Aspen Wireless, a local integrator, helped the town of Vail to choose the world's best-selling millimeter wave radios from Cyclo, and the, uh, the powerful solution at uh, 60 and 70, 80 GHz are delivering the fiber-like connectivity in the town of Vail. Now let's hear uh, what uh, the director of IT from the town of Vail had to say. Our uh, municipal employee used the network extensively to access our security cameras and parking system. And our inspectors out at the field and uh, police personnel often upload videos, which is done easily and quickly with the network's high capacity and generous data capacity. Uh, this quote uh, was taken from uh, Ron Branden, which is the IT director of the town of Vail. This is an excellent uh, solution of how combining Cyclo and Rocus in one network can deliver a smart city application at very high capacity and no interference at all. Now let's jump to another uh, example. Next one is, excuse me, Next one is a project uh, that demanded an installation to be completed in three weeks. That's uh, the city of uh, Fort Myers in Florida. Only Cyclo uh, wireless millimeter wave uh, radio with its 11 non-overlapping channels enable installation while skipping the time-consuming task of frequency survey. On top of that, the solution leverages Cyclo's inherent carrier grade networking that includes easy to, uh, to configure resilient rings uh, operating on the standard called G8032, which significantly enhance network's availability. Another example is the Tour de France. Uh, Tour de France actually starts every year in the UK. And this example, it uh, started at uh, the city of Leeds in uh, the northern part of the uh, UK. And uh, Tour de France, uh, being the third largest sporting event in the world, gathered more than 2,000, 2, uh, excuse me, 200,000 spectators uh, linking the lines, many journalists and many TV channels. So just like we saw earlier in the town of Vail, uh, gathering people at uh, such event uh, contribute uh, sometimes to a collapse of uh, cellular networks. We can see here in the picture 
what people are doing in such event. They are taking pictures with their mobile phone and expecting a network to enable them to share it over social media. And the solution uh, chosen by uh, the local integrator called the Virgin Media was again the combination of Ciclu as a backhaul and Rakus as a access to handle this high capacity demand. So, why connect Ciclu with Rakus? Ciclu millimeter wave uh, technology utilizes high uh, frequency bands around 60, 70, and 80 gigahertz that feature pencil bin and abundant, uncongested, unpopulated wide spectrum. These characteristics translate into reliable, interference-free, and predictable performance. High capacity and connectivity solution are easily achieved. Ciclu opened the market for affordable gigabit capacity by mass producing the first all silicon millimeter wave uh, radio, which is still the most deployed millimeter wave connectivity solution in the world. For any capacity hungry services, uh, it bypassed the expensive year long process, process of installing physical cables and fibers under street and pavements. The result is comprehensive fiber extension solution with a very attractive ROI. Future-proof capacity, lower capex, and tomorrow's network demands are met today. Ciclu capacity risk solution do not require any advanced IT knowledge or skill and are uh, swiftly installed to deliver secure, interference-free, high-quality wireless access. A Ciclu commissioning training takes only one day and uh, it can help uh, uh, to deploy it uh, uh, very fast. But uh, we can see also here, uh, as a reminder, 60 gigahertz band is for street level, and it can go up to 0.6 of a mile, and the 80 gigahertz uh, deployed usually on rooftops and a cellular mast can go up to three miles. Uh, it guaranteed a multi-gigabit capacity, and uh, we are talking about a technology uh, which is uh, successfully deployed uh, globally. With that, I'm concluding uh, uh, this part of the presentation, and I'm handling back uh, the presentation to the Rakus team. Thank you. Danny, thank you. That was great. Quick comment here. So, uh, how to bring Ciclu into your opportunity? We do have an FAQ, a frequent, Frequently Asked Questions document, um, on the partner portal. So um, if you go to the Ruckus Ready ecosystem page on the partner portal, just click on Ciclu, you'll see a solution brief, you'll see a presentation that you can use if you want to you know, tap into that to, to present this to a customer. There's also a frequently asked questions document, which answers things like how do you qualify a Ciclu lead, how do you get engaged with Ciclu, um, you know, how do you become a VAR. Uh, and also, there's a whole list of, of resources there. You can see that you know it, it's all well documented. Uh, another um, link we might give you is just siklu.com/ruckus, and all this will be available. Okay, so just to to wrap it up, um, again we have uh, we have information on ruckuswireless.com on our public website, and this is the same for all of our Ruckus Ready ecosystem partners will only include publicly available information like the solution brief and potentially a case study. Under the partner portal, um, go to the Ruckus Ready page and there's quite a bit more collateral that uh, Ruckus salespeople, Ruckus channel partners can use to help position and sell with ecosystem partners. Uh, Royston, I think most of, uh, certainly all the Ruckus salespeople should know Royston, but, but uh, Royston can answer any further questions on that. So, um, we are now open for Q&A. Uh, we've had a few come in privately, but, but we would encourage you at this point to uh, enter any additional questions you might have on, on smart cities, um, on millimeter wave, or especially on Ciclu, the product company, uh, how to use it. Let me get started um, with one um, that, that 
that came in pretty early on. And this is for you, Danny. Uh, and, and, and actually, there's a couple of them that I'm, I'm combining. Uh, someone asked, where are you deployed? Is it only U.S. Or, or globally? And another person asked, you know, how do I know if millimeter wave is, a, is available for use in my country? So the general question is, how do we find, if we're not in the U.S., how do we know whether or not this is available in our market? Great question. So basically, uh, CICLO is already deployed in more than 30, 30 countries around the world. In general, when we talk about millimeter wave, it's opened in almost 100 countries around the world. And on our uh, landing page, uh, as we mentioned, CICLO.com slash RACUS, uh, we uploaded today a database for both 60 and 70 gigahertz covering all the countries that we are aware of that opened the market and those that are now under a, a, a recognition or a, a process of opening it. So basically the answer is a CICLU available in 30 countries and millimeter wave is already open in around 100. Okay, so, so really this is pretty likely to be available and you have resources at, at CICLU.com slash ruckus that can confirm for any specific country. Great. Um, we had one come in here uh, real time. Thank you, Vincent. Um, question again to you, Danny. How does Ciclu compare to other 60 gigahertz solutions such as sub-10 or others? So basically, uh, I mentioned during my presentation uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, revolution that Ciclu made about five years ago to a millimeter wave market. Uh, Ciclu uh, developed uh, its own proprietary all silicon solution, which was the first millimeter wave radio uh, at affordable prices on the market. Uh, thanks to that, uh, we managed to grab a significant market share. Uh, if we gather everything on a uh, millimeter wave it's around 32 percent today and on 60 gigahertz in particular it's around 50 percent so we, when you compare that product it's probably much expensive less internet ports no poe out and, and a very small experience in terms of deployment we are the most deployed by far okay excellent thank you and um, I'm going to ask it, we'll see what we get, uh, but you, you mentioned it, uh, cost. So the, the key positioning here is that fiber is just too expensive uh, in addition to simply being infeasible in some locations. Can you give us some ballpark in terms of planning level pricing guidelines or cost guidelines? Yes. Yes. So I'll talk about uh, MSRP and a kit that contains two radios, two end of the link, two mounting kits. IP67 field cable glands and PoE power supplies all together starts at around 2900 MSRP. Did you say 2900 MSRP? Yeah, 2900 US dollars MSRP. Excellent. Okay. That's great. Thank you for that. And obviously, if someone, if one of our VARs is working with you, you have a channel model where they can get some discount and earn a margin on that. Yeah, that's end user price. So uh, you know that vows have a significant uh, discount. Okay. Um, here's another one that, that, that's come in. Uh, on one of the slides, I think, that, that Barat introduced, we talked about the FCC recently opening up additional spectrum. Uh, and and I, my understanding, I'm just adding to it, is that I think the FCC might be out in front on that in the 60 gigahertz band. Um, when this happens, is that a software upgrade for a cyclic radio, or would someone need to replace the, the radio to take advantage of that? So basically, the current hardware that we have in 60 gigahertz supports a little bit more than what used to be available in the US, which was the limit was 64. We support uh, today uh, 66, and this is by license, and uh, can be uh, done uh, from remote. And uh, soon we will uh, release a new hardware that will go all the way up to 71. Okay, good. 
Thank you. Um, it might, it, uh, we, just a small note, it might be uh, uh, worth mentioning that between 64 and 66 that we support, the oxygen absorption is uh, much uh, lower, which means the availability and range are enhanced. Um, okay. Um, 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 quick, quick question. I think you, a you answered this, but it is really, again, very central to this. Uh, what is the range on millimeter wave technology? And I guess either Barat or Danny could answer this. Yeah, Danny, you want to you wanna get that one? Yes. So, uh, I, I want to make some clarification. I've talked about two types of solutions. One, one is the 60 gigahertz uh, product line operating on uh, between 57 to 66 today. Those are, uh, due to the oxygen absorption, are limited in terms of range. So those can go a little than one kilometer or up to one kilometer, depending on the required capacity and availability. On the other hand, we have also a rooftop a aggregation links, which are really a, available for a, you know, extending fiber while keeping the same speeds, and those can go up to six kilometers, thanks to a bigger antennas and higher peaks, power, and length, and less a absorption by oxygen or no absorption by a oxygen. So those links a, can go today up to 2 gigabit full duplex to about 6 kilometers. By the end of the year, we will have on the same radios even a 5 gigabit full duplex. Okay. Thank you. Um, question. Are cyclic devices integrated into ruckus controllers? And if not, is there any plan to do so? I'm going to steer this to Barat. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, so as of uh, right now, no, Cyclo devices are not integrated with uh, Ruckus controllers. Um, it, you know, currently we don't have uh, any plan as of now, but that might uh, change uh, in the future. Um, one of the questions is just, that just come in on the Q&A panel. And uh, Danny, I think this is kind of, uh, and we touched a lot about rain, but uh, we have a question from Bob here. How does millimeter wave handle snow? So just another form of precipitation. So how is it affected by snow? So basically, uh, all our radios are coming with a special forming cover on, on front of the radom, the, the front of the radio, which uh, helps a lot to eliminate uh, snow and water uh, stick to it. Uh, of course, anything uh, with water is uh, an issue for millimeter wave. Uh, what I can say that uh, this usually helps and uh, we have a great experience. Uh, those links are widely adopted in tough conditions, like in Russia, which is one of the main markets where we sell, even in Siberia. And uh, those links even survived the Hurricane Sandy. So uh, no real issue with snow, uh, as long as uh, you don't uh, own the, the special forming uh, cover that we have on front of the radio. Okay. So basically, it's the same impact as rain would be. Oh, it doesn't build that. Uh, even even less because snow is much drier. So rain affects not because the water touches the radio, but because it adds attenuation or the air between the two ends of things. On the other end, uh, snow is less. Uh, we are less sensitive uh, to snow if it if it falls bit on the on the path between the two radios. Only if it sticks to the radio itself on the front, on the antenna, that might uh, have some influence. Okay, okay, good. Um, I have two more. Um, so, attendees, if there's anything else you want to ask, this is a good time to, to enter, as someone just did. But uh, first one, and, and this might be a, you may have talked about this, but just to be clear, can Siklu support both point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint? No, this is a point-to-point -point solution. Uh, to do point-to-multipoint, you have to uh, deploy multiple links on the same location and address. On the other hand, uh, what our customers are using, they are, they are doing it, they are implementing it in a ring. 
and this gives both a uh, resiliency and a uh, high capacity. Okay, so similar to a fiber. Good, thank you. Um, here's one, I, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this. So the question was, can I deploy a Ciclu link without configuring it? So you know, how hard is it to set up, how, how hard is it to set up one of these things? Surprisingly, the answer is yes. Uh, the experience uh, Ciclu uh, customers, what they do, uh, I explained a little bit about the link budget calculator, that you put the location, you put the link distance, and you get the expected performance. And this is without touching the radio itself. You just go online, uh, put uh, the name of the city or the lat loan, the coordination, and you get another input that the link budget calculator gives you is the expected RSSI, which is the receiver level sensitivity uh, uh, information. With that, you go to the field without taking any laptop or doing any configuration. You simply uh, put the radio, connect the power, align them while using your voltmeter. You take that value of RSSI that you did in your office, and you look for it while you align the radio. It is a point-to-point -point solution. The reading on the voltmeter display tell you how close you are to that value. Once you reach a value, you simply restart the radio and it's up and running, delivering one gigabit or two, depends on the model, with heatless adaptive modulation, uh, quality of service, everything. On okay. top of that, of course, you can configure it from remote, you can uh, do any manipulation, but to deliver a service out of the box, it's a, it's a time bad. Yeah, okay. Um, there's one last question here. Um, is there any specific Ruckus Ciclu integration, uh, either physical or software? No, there's not. It's a it's a simple Ethernet connection, as I understand it, uh, and it you know it's just like any other backhaul solution. Um, so w with that, I think those that that wraps up our Q and A. Um, I let me just just uh, summarize this, um, starting from the beginning. Smart cities is a very exciting market. Ruckus Wireless is very well suited for it. We've got lots of case studies. They're, they're ready to go. You can use them. We have a, a economic um, analysis model, so you can model what it might cost and what the benefits might be. We've got presentations, and most importantly, we've got a great uh, Wi-Fi solution, a great ecosystem for this market. Um, Ciclu, millimeter wave wireless, and Ciclu in particular, we think are a very important tool, uh, option for you to be aware of. If you go into a city, you know, you're, you're going to want to look for existing fiber. We know that. Um, but after that, it starts to get creative. Uh, Ciclu is a proven approach. You, you saw, I think Danny presented like four or five uh, instances where he deployed with Ruckus in high-density urban locations. Uh, we made him pull several additional case studies just from a timing perspective, but it's, it's proven it works. You can confidently take this out to your, your customers and say, you know, in, the, in this part of the city, if we want to deploy very high-performance Wi-Fi, um, we can use Ciclu as a, as a uh, reasonably priced backhaul um, option. Um, so we, we think it, it, it's a it's a great enhancement or extension of our solution. Um, Danny or Barat, do you have any other last thoughts before we wrap this up? Um, yes, yeah, Steve. I think it's kind of uh, exactly what you mentioned, right? Ciclu is just another tool in your toolkit. Uh, you know, when you're thinking about backhaul uh, and you need an alternative to fiber, you get fiber-like speeds without the fiber-like cost. Uh, that's where millimeter wave technology really shines. And you, know, you might find more creative use cases depending on your customer, but this is something to be aware of. It's, it's, a, it's a very exciting technology, very high throughput, uh, solves a lot of problems uh, at a fraction of the cost. So, um, Danny, is there something that uh, you wanted to wrap up with? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, of course, uh, we are here uh, for any uh, more information uh, people might uh, require, and I'm sure there is. Uh, we have lots of experience uh, implementing all over the world, and uh, we are very excited uh, for doing this uh, partnership. Fantastic. 
Danny, thank you very much for your support and your time on the call. I think this is a really useful information to get out to the Ruckus uh, channel. Uh, all the attendees, we will, it takes a day or so to get this recording back from WebEx. We will send out a link to the full recorded session as well as the slides that were presented today. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to Danny at SICLU or to myself, Steve Wimsett, uh, Bharat Jayakamar from Ruckus Product Management, or Royston Taylor uh, from Ruckus, uh, the Ruckus Ready Program. With that, we're going to close. Thank you all for attending.